This is Punanai, a small town in the eastern province of Sri Lanka, an island off the southern coast of India. Back in the 1920s, this hamlet was terrorized by a notorious man-eating leopard. Unlike its neighboring country, India, Sri Lanka never had as many man-eating leopards. Hence, this sudden series of attacks was an unwelcome anomaly. The Sri Lankan leopard is one of the eight recognized subspecies of leopard and is the country's top predator. The local leopards are larger in comparison to their relatives elsewhere. They have supple, elongated bodies, and as characteristic to this species, their rusty yellow coat is peppered with black spots and rosettes. Leopard attacks on humans are considered rare. Most reports of attacks have been from either India or Nepal. Sri Lanka too has had its fair share of leopard attacks, but the numbers are relatively low compared to other countries. One of the earliest recorded man-eaters in the country was a leopard that terrorized Punanai back in the 1920s. During its reign, it reportedly killed and devoured around 12 people. What causes a leopard to cultivate a taste for human flesh? There was hardly any reason as to why this leopard became a man-eater. And very interesting fact that this leopard, most of his kills were made on the 28-mile post on the Polonaro road which means that he was very familiar with people walking along that road and he got used to ambushing people on that stretch of road. Generally, humans are not the food of Sri Lankan leopards. In fact, the local leopards are blessed with an abundance of prey. For instance, the axis or spotted deer constitutes a large part of its diet. The man-eater of Punanai probably cultivated its taste for human flesh by accidentally killing a human out of fear. Allegedly, its first victim was a small moor boy. The most recent leopard attack in Sri Lanka was recorded in 2014 in the hill country when a woman was killed after entering a reserve to herd cattle. This vicious attack emphasized the human leopard conflict in the country. During recent times, I was really saddened to see that uh, even some schoolgirls and schoolboys have been attacked in the Nuralia area. And that is uh, very frankly, I think, because of the enroachment into the leopard territory. And also at the same time, I think the environment that leopards have been living in, especially in the hill country, uh, has been reduced. And the leopards are getting urbanized which is happening in India also, outside the national parks. And I think unless something very drastic is done, this is going to be a very serious problem in the future. With deforestation and human habitation, leopard habitats have gradually declined, resulting in leopards encroaching to kill domestic animals and livestock for survival. Perhaps the man-eater of Punanai suffered a similar lack of provisions, causing him to attack humans in order to survive. But this is what remains of the man-eater of Punanai today. Over 80 years old, the skin of the man-eater was stuffed and restored after it was killed in 1924, effectively ending its reign of terror. Regardless, the leopard's existence is vital for environmental balance, and its survival faces a major threat due to poaching. Basically, I think the future of conservation anywhere in the world is getting the people educated as to the environment that they are living in. First of all, we have to get a program going to identify, I think, some of the leopards in the, especially in the hill country area like Norelia and all those areas. Down south and maybe in the Vilpath regions and all that, uh, it's not too bad at the moment, but the main conflict uh, today is in the hill country. Eva gave me Barkepel Jivatun Minisu, Kotiake person to Kodak, Mona de la Tianava, Tame Minisu, me Teva Tole Tamai, Vedakarla, Tekarla Tama Jivatene, a Tea set in the la, me Kotek Paninava, in some make a may divic personator, me Vesunava Karla, then the Giratamai, Api Lima Karane. From January two thousand and one to the present, more than thirty cases of poaching have been reported. 
but measures are being taken to conserve this species in the country, hopefully ensuring its rightful place as a keystone species within the rich biodiversity of Sri Lanka.